Okay, welcome back to the channel. As you can see from my screen, I'm running OpenXR Toolkit and I'm beta testing the Pimax Crystal in DCS. I'm going to see if I can get the headset to boot up. <clears throat> I had turned it off because I thought it was done for the night and then realized that the video I had made and I was very happy with didn't, didn't actually record. Oh, break my heart. Okay, so I've just turned the headset on at the headset. We should see it go to Diagnose 10600 and then show connected. Sometimes it takes a couple of seconds. There it is, connected. This is almost bulletproof, uh, this crystal, compared to the 8KX. The 8KX development cycle was a rough one. I mean, when it was released, the, uh, the firmware and the software that ran it was eh, largely imperfect. It's certainly gotten a lot better. I've got about two hours of play on this battery and it's half done. And uh, it's also been sitting between videos, so it uses up battery just uh, just sitting there, unfortunately. But about four hours per battery is what I'm thinking, and uh, hopefully that'll get optimized a little bit more. And maybe they'll figure out a way to get power to the XR2 chip one of these days. Uh, maybe the next generation of XR chips, I don't know, but right now it still needs the batteries. And it's... Kind of a mixed blessing, actually, because the batteries provide a really awesome counterweight, making the uh, making the headset quite a bit more comfortable. Okay, I've got to go there. And now I want to know if I can make sure that I've got the speakers working on the headset. All right, let's go to device settings. We're in DCS. I've got render quality set to one, which is pretty standard. I mean, if you're running a, a weaker machine, you might have to drop it down to 0.75. If you're running a stronger machine, you can probably get away with 1.25. I found the difference between one and 1.25 is not as great as the difference between one and 0.75. I don't know why. Maybe there's just a visual threshold there that we cross with the lower number. Uh, hidden area mask is turned off. Now, if you turn it on, you gain, I think, a few frames per second. But the theory is that you lose some field of view. So turning this off gives you slightly more field of view. Frankly, I don't know if I can tell the difference, but I'm going to play with it off now. And let's start the game. Should be a pop-up here pretty quick requiring me to sign in. Interesting thing about DCS, I tried playing it offline today and none of the modules I purchased were available offline. You've got to be logged in to DCS to use the modules you've paid for, which strikes me as odd and maybe not the best policy in the world, but I don't know what the reason is for it. So. I don't want to be too critical because I do really like DCS. I think they have uh, top of the line flight models. The flight models are as good as it gets for uh, combat sims or for, for flight sims in general. Uh, it's excellent. The cockpits are beautiful. The scenery is really accurate and detailed. Um, I can't say that it's realistic though in the way that Flight Sim 2020 is. But you can certainly use the scenery in DCS to navigate, to find your way around. And uh, it's more than, more than enough to have a very immersive game experience. Okay, now before I put the headset on, let's check our settings in. Oh, I guess I've got to put the headset on to do this. <laughs> it came up in open XR, so I must be doing something, right? Let's make sure that we've got... Uh, op yeah, there we've got OpenXR running. The overlay is set for advanced. I don't really want it on advanced. I just want frames per second. I'm leaving upscaling and sharpening off. Foveated rendering. I'm not going to bother with. Turbo mode is on. And there we go. Exit menu. Okay. Now, let's go in here and see what we got. Under graphics, I've got textures set to high. I don't know how much of a difference that makes, really. 
uh, terrain textures again I don't know I've got it set to high but frankly the terrain isn't all that detailed it's not it's not like flight sim 2020 so it's not if you don't have all the detail in the world on it, it's not the end of the world. You can still use the scenery to navigate and to fight. Visibility range, I've set to ultra. I don't know if that has an effect in the headset, but I think, I think it will push the haze out further. When you reduce visibility range, you increase frame rate by reducing the amount of area that has to be rendered accurately, precisely, and densely, he said pompously. So that's my theory anyway, so I'll leave that off. Motion blur is off. SSAA, I'm going to turn off. I don't know what it is, but I'm turning it off. I'm going to leave every other setting the same. Forest details are set to maximum. Scenery details factor set to close to maximum. Chimney smoke is off. That's okay. Don't need rain droplets to test this. All right, let's see what we get. Spitfire dogfight. That's what we've been doing. And I'm very much afraid that I'm going to get my butt shot down while I'm talking here, which would not be the end of the world. One thing I really like about the crystal is you can, you can read the small print in every screen so nicely. It's so clear. Looking out to the wing, not to be walked on. I can read that. I'm not sure which eye I've got enabled. I've got DCS set to record just one eye. So I'm trying to turn my head as much as I can to make sure that you see what I see. The detail level on the ground is pretty good. The horizon has been set way out there. So you can see where the horizon is. It kind of drifts into the ocean and it's a bit fuzzy. But it's set out a long ways. So that shouldn't have a whole lot of effect on the game. Wow, <laughs> that looks great. Oh my gosh. And, yeah, I mean, it looks pretty amazing. So let's just uh, start it and see where we're at. Frame rate, 54 frames per second. Well, I've never been able to do that on the 8KX. Uh, so I wonder, I mean, I have, but with detail set way, way down. Um, I wonder what this new, more optimized version of DCS will do on the 8KX, considering we now have uh, multi-core threading, which is you know pretty amazing, I think, that they would take the time to rewrite so much code. I mean, it's not a small job. And uh, I'm getting you know, 47, 50 frames per second. I'm okay with that. That's, that's good. Keep resetting my head position. Let's see what this guy looks like when we get closer. Oh boy, look at the colors on that airplane. The orange and the yellow on the tail, absolutely clear and vibrant. When I look up at the sky, I got 54 frames per second. As we look at the ground, it falls off to 44, 45. That's okay. I'm all right with that. That's uh, that's good for a 3090 and an Intel 9900. I mean, it's so funny with computers and headsets. This, the 8KX and the Intel 9900 and the 3090 GPU. These were, you know, fairly close to state of the art for flight sims uh, when I. I got my 8KX a couple years ago. Let's get a little closer to the ground and see what it looks like. Ooh, I like the way the light goes across the canopy. And the light and shadow in the cockpit is just, just amazing, really good. Let's get low and see what happens. Okay, so there's no, there's no jittering, shuddering, or loss in frame rate as I get closer to the ground. That's really good. And as I said, the graphics aren't award winners. I mean, the, the detail is good, but it's not like it looks like the real world. The trees all look the same and blah, blah, blah. But if you, if you come to DCS for the scenery, you're in the wrong game. Go play Flight Sim 2020, which I also love, by the way. This game is about 
realistic flight sims, uh, flight simulation, great flight models, and uh, beautifully done cockpits and cockpit simulations. Nobody does it better than DCS. It's expensive, yeah, it really is. That's really my main knock on it. But it's good, it's, uh, it's brilliant. And in the 8KX, it looks great. In the crystal, I gotta say, this is, okay, this is beyond my expectations. If I look at the panel, the black of the panel is really black with local dimming turned on. And the color of the controls and the rims around the controls, yellow, green, red, orange, the gear light up is red and a bright red. The play of shadow and light, I mean, it's, it's not just good, it's, uh, it's beyond good. Is that a convoy rolling down there? Yeah, it is. Look at that. Look at that. Cars moving. Okay. Well, I don't think I need to tell you a lot more. I'm, I think the settings we've got here, 1.0 render in Pimax client, set to, I think, 0.9 for pixel density in DCS. Terrain set high. A lot of stuff set high, and it's still running at 51 frames per second. And, of course, I have anti-aliasing turned off. I discovered in IL-2 that I get a huge frame boost if I do that. And uh, one of the benefits of the Pimax Crystal is that the, uh, the pixel density is so high that when you turn anti-aliasing off, you don't really notice it. You don't need it. All right. Well, I'm not going to bother flying too much longer. And I think I've said enough to, uh, to hopefully inform you. My first impressions of DCS and the Pimax Crystal, a wonderful combination. I got this great clarity and resolution in the Pimax, and we've got these wonderfully detailed cockpits. The lighting and the graphics effects in DCS are top drawer. The scenery is extremely accurate in terms of in terms of using it to navigate in the real world areas. At least I believe it is. I mean, I've been able to use it to navigate from one place to another within the uh, module, so that's cool. And I think all I can really tell you is, I don't know if I need to get a lot more performance out of this. 52 frames per second. I would like to be able to set pixel density up a little bit higher. But I can still read the writing on all the gauges. And just moving my eyes around, if I just move my eyes down to that lower right fuel gauge, I can't quite read it, but if I look at it, I can. So uh, when I've got pixel density higher, it's a little clearer. But not so much that it destroys the immersion to play like this. Slightly lower uh, renders, slightly lower, lower pixel density in the game. It's still very, very, very playable. Oh, and the sound is good. Since the last update, I've mentioned this in other videos, even these crappy little speakers that come with the Pimax, as opposed to the advanced uh, dynamic sp speakers they provide in the DMAS system for an extra hundred bucks, uh, even these little speakers sound great. Maybe not great, but, but better than they did on the 8KX by a bunch, and it's certainly playable. Uh, I think the wise thing to do if you want one of these is order early. Order while you still got the uh, the pre-order buy on until June 1st, I think. You'll want to check with Pimax to be sure. But you get the DMAS system for free if you buy a Pimax Crystal. And if you want great audio, according to my colleagues in the beta test, the DMAS is at least as good as the Index and in some ways better, which is awesome. Okay, that's all I'm going to say, and that's probably more than enough. <laughs> Thank you for watching.